And then insects. I, I'm not an insect guy, so I can't give you a ton of biology on these, but you guys probably recognize this critter, right? Does anybody know this one? Yeah, this is emerald ash borer, which was a big news story several years ago and maybe a little bit of a poster child of how to react late and have a big problem, right? We've lost a lot of ash trees because we either reacted late or didn't necessarily react correctly or didn't know exactly what to do. So uh, a species that um, is a good example of why we want to keep things out because of the problem we've had with losing ash trees due to this uh, insect that burrows under the bark and eventually kills ash trees. Quickly. Quickly. Yep, within a season. Yep. So the next one that uh, Department of Agriculture, who does the insect side of invasives for us, is really concerned about Asian longhorn beetle. We don't have it in Michigan, but it's very close. They had it in Chicago and eradicated it. They've had it in New York, so it's close. Again, it's from Asia, and we think it probably comes over in shipping crate materials burrowed into the wood of shipping crates. But it uh, supposedly, in areas where it has been invasive, is much worse than emerald ash borer because it feeds and uses trees beyond just one species. So this can attack uh, maples and oaks and some of the hardwoods. We definitely don't want to lose. Uh, so Asian longhorn beetle, pretty distinctive critter because it's got these really long antenna and black dots. There is one native lookalike. I think it's called the pine sawyer beetle. But if you see something like this, you definitely want to report that and it would have a huge impact on the uh, forest industry here in Michigan, Asian longhorn beetle. So that's a lot of species examples and some of the harm they cause. Let's move on to how these things get here. Well, global transportation and shipping is a huge vector and historically has been a huge vector. That's how a lot of things got here initially. Uh, habitat modifications, this is like moving dirt around for a new building project or putting in a new road or putting in a new sewer, building a dam, removing a dam. Those are things that we consider habitat modifications that have implications for introducing or spreading invasives. Organisms in trade, these are things we buy, sell, nursery things, um, fishing bait, um, aquarium fish, uh, turtles, frogs, those sorts of things, things that are in trade. And then hitchhiking, this is huge too. Things that we inadvertently move because they attach to our clothes or attach to our recreational equipment like our boats, our kayaks, our RVs, our ORVs, our bikes. So I'm just gonna quickly go through some of these. And I, this is kind of a cool slide. It's the global transportation and shipping routes in the United States. And I don't, you know, who, I'm not gonna get into what all the colors mean and the, the density of the routes and so forth, but you can see we are a really connected world these days, much more than we used to be. And so things have the opportunity to come to us in Michigan from Africa and Europe and Asia much more than they did, say, 50 years ago. And likewise, these are the air traffic, global air traffic routes. So we are super connected, lots of opportunities from things from other continents and other hemispheres to reach Michigan that maybe historically could not have gotten here. And then had a habitat modification. So I, back to that other slide, I should have mentioned, so things like shipping crates and things coming over in water of, of ships and um, things that are inadvertently brought here. And then there's things in trade that are brought here from around the world too. But let's talk about hab habitat modifications. Let's take, say these red dots are sea lamprey or something like sea lamprey. When we decide we want to open up things like the St. Lawrence Seaway, and, and all of the canal systems that connect the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean, that has implications too. So there was no natural connection between the Great Lakes and, uh, and the ocean at one point, but we've since opened up some of these canal systems, the Erie Canal, the Welland Canal, St. Lawrence Seaway, and we've opened up routes for critters to potentially move into the Great Lakes and they start spreading, and we think that's one way that sea lamprey may have gotten here swam naturally through connections that we've opened up. So that's another vector, habitat modifications. Organisms in trade, the, the uh, plant in front, the purple plant is uh, Japanese barberry, really cool shrub, ornamental plant, but if it gets into the wild, uh, this is a picture from Michigan, <coughs> barberry can spread and, and have huge impacts. It's, it's got thorns on it. Um, so you, you're not going to want to walk through this. Deer don't like walking through it, so it changes the landscape when it leaves our property. 
Uh, again, fish, aquarium plants, things that are really cool at home and really cool in the classroom um, don't belong in the wild. You know, we, we every year, this is um, Sarah Lesage, a colleague of mine, every year we get calls of, I oh, the huge goldfish I caught in a river or lake I like to fish in. Um, you know, it's because somebody released them. So this is a koi, huge goldfish on the left, uh, paku, which is a um, uh, South American fish species, does not overwinter in Michigan. A piranha, we get calls every year, somebody catches a piranha, but they don't overwinter either. So again, it's kind of the alligator example. We don't want piranha in our lakes, and please don't dump piranha, but they, they don't overwinter here. But we do get calls of people legitimately catching piranha every year. Uh, it's parrot feather, that's that same parrot feather site I showed, and I put it here because parrot feather is, again, a popular aquarium plant. Hitchhiking, this is a picture of a boat from Muskegon. Um, some of this is native Vallisneria eel grass, so not necessarily invasive, but you can see how weeds, whether they're native or not, can move between lakes when you pull a boat out of the water and it looks like this, and then you dump it in a neighboring lake or a neighboring river. And there's all kinds of stuff growing on the hull there, maybe, maybe young zebra mussels that could get transported. Bike wheels, right? Seeds and fragments of plants can get stuck in there. Firewood is a huge one for those insects, emerald ash borer, Asian longhorn beetle. We think if Asian longhorn beetle is going to get here, it's probably going to come through firewood. Now that it's in the United States, may make it to Michigan through firewood. So buy your firewood locally. Don't, don't move it from one place to another. Don't buy firewood here and take it up to the UP or vice versa. So what can you do to help? I've started to hint at some of those things. Clean, drain, dry your stuff. We tell boaters and anglers all the time, clean everything off your boat when you pull it out of the water, dry it, um, you know, take a towel, run it around the outside, let things dry for five days if you can, pull your drain plug, empty the water out of your bilge or your life well. If you do those three simple steps, clean, drain, dry, we'll be a lot better off than we are now. It's not 100% guarantee, but much better than what we've been doing. Same applies for stuff you might do on the land, right? Clean off your your recreational equipment as well. <coughs> Play, clean, go is the kind of the terrestrial side of clean, drain, dry. And those are the two campaigns that the state of Michigan uses. I think I've got one more Play, clean, go slide here. Yep. Bikes. Get them off your stuff. And then this one's for the teachers, right? If you have aquarium pets, even if they're native, instead of releasing them to the wild, um, take them back to a pet store. Take them somewhere where they are going to um, stay in captivity rather than releasing them on school property or having one of your students take them home and then who knows where they end up. Uh, take them back to a pet store. They'll, they'll find something to do with it. That way we know we're not going to have any releases. And yeah, don't release your aquarium fish. That guy dropping in there. Use local firewood. I touched on that one, right? Lots of things can be transported in wood that you would never know are there. And I think this is my last slide. And then, so, you know, I, invasive species stuff that, you know, doing outreach for invasive species, I always feel depressing. I'm always telling people bad news and what not to do and don't do this and you spread that. And I always end on, well, at least we're not in Florida where we have huge invasive snakes to deal with that eat goats. That's it. Um, so again, I'm Kevin Walters with DEQ. If you guys uh, need any, some, a lot of these materials over here I have available, like the posters and the watch list cards. There's that one poster that has fish on one side. The back side is all invasive species in Michigan. Take as many of those as you want, but if you want more of that stuff, um, just get on our website and you can get a hold of me, michigan.gov slash invasives. So thank you.